You shouldn't make things up when we're talking about. Can you open the door, please? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're discussing how Knock at the Cabin leaves out the real horrific ending. I will ask for the last time. Will you make a choice? For this video, we'll be looking at how M. Night Shyamalan's 2023 film adaptation of Paul G. Tremblay's 2018 novel The Cabin at the End of the World deviates from its source material. For book readers and moviegoers alike, this essay is twisted with spoilers. Are you glad or frustrated that Knock at the Cabin changed the ending? Let us know in the comments. Families throughout history have been chosen to make this decision. Your family must choose to willingly sacrifice one of the three of you to prevent the apocalypse. The film builds to a soul-crushing climax where Eric and Andrew must make an impossible choice. Kill a family member to stop the apocalypse or let the world end. With character Wen not being an option, Eric encourages Andrew to pull the trigger. We've been given the chance to decide the fate of everyone. Time's running out on the world. I'm scared. Although skeptical, Andrew reluctantly shoots the man he loves, and the darkness begins to clear. As Andrew and Wen make it to a diner, they learn that the plagues have stopped. Searching the car that the four horsemen arrived in, Andrew finds that they were telling the truth about their professions and lives. However, it's never clarified if Redmond was the one who attacked Andrew at the bar years ago. Is it just us, or did that guy sound like Woody Harrelson? I'm sorry, all right? I'm, I was out of line. I don't want to fight. You're not as stupid as you look. Now I want to fight. <laughs> Turning on the car radio, Andrew and Wen hear Boogie Choose, the same song that the family was singing along to on their way to the cabin. I want to put on my, 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 my boogie shoes. Although Andrew doesn't want to listen at first, Wen encourages him to play the song as they drive off. The funky tune seems to indicate that the father and daughter will move on from this tragic loss without ever forgetting Eric. The song's lyrics, I want to do it till the sun comes up, are usually interpreted in a suggestive way. Here, though, the sun coming up takes on a more literal sense, as the darkness disperses and the family of two starts a new chapter. Although bittersweet, Shyamalan's ending is far more uplifting than the books. There is nothing more flawed and perfect in this world than our family. For me. For its first half, Knock at the Cabin stays mostly faithful to the novel, with four intruders arriving at the cabin, telling the family that one must die. Your family has been chosen to make a horrible decision. If you fail to choose, the world will end. The film begins to deviate when Andrew makes a break for his gun after Adrian is sacrificed. He shoots Sabrina before Leonard takes his own life, leaving Andrew and Eric to make the choice. It didn't have to be like this. Get one out of here. In the book, Adrian is about to be sacrificed when Andrew goes for the gun. Adrian dies instead of Sabrina during the chaos, but she isn't the only one. Wen gets caught in the crossfire, resulting in easily the book's saddest moment. But my heart is broken. Why is it broken? Because of what I have to do today. Adding to the tragedy, Leonard says that since Wen's death was an accident, either Andrew or Eric must be willingly sacrificed. I believe you were chosen because your family's love for each other is so pure. I know you've been through a lot and people haven't been fair to you. This is more than Sabrina can bear, driving her to kill Leonard, who agreed to be tied up after what happened to Wen. Sabrina gives Andrew and Eric the keys to Redmond's car, but she can't live with what she's done. Let me help him! Don't touch him! I'm a nurse! He's hurt! With only two left, Eric considers following Sabrina's actions. Even with planes falling from the sky, Andrew still has a hard time believing that the world is ending. If it is, however, Andrew argues that Wen's death should be enough to satisfy the powers that be. Andrew and Eric also decide that they don't want to live without one another. Andrew, I saw something. There was something in the light. And I feel it now. Heading to Redmond's car, they accept whatever lies on the horizon. We don't learn the world's fate or if the four horsemen were right. 
Where the book leaves us on an ambiguous note, the film clarifies that the apocalypse was almost certainly real and Eric's death made a difference. Either that or this was all just a series of inexplicable coincidences, which naturally sounds more far-fetched than the world ending. Do you really think it's all just a coincidence? I have to believe that! M. Night Shyamalan movies are known for their wicked twists. Knock at the Cabin has one of his more straightforward endings, with nothing as unexpected as Malcolm being a ghost or Mr. Glass being the villain. Hopefully we didn't spoil those films for you too. Now that we know who you are, I know who I am. For those who read The Cabin at the End of the World, though, the twist is how the film's conclusion goes in an entirely different direction. Although the source material's setup was right up Shyamalan's alley, he knew up front that he wanted to tweak the ending, if only to leave his own signature. Because I kind of decided to, to go away from the book in the second half, mm. it was beautiful, that process of going, I, I wonder what how the characters are going to come to terms with this. In an interview with Digital Spy, Shyamalan explains that he felt the book and his movie should exist as separate entities, hence why they don't share the same title. In many cases, the author can have reservations when a filmmaker takes their work in another direction. Just look at Stanley Kubrick's adaptation of Stephen King's The Shining. How do you like it? <laughs> Shyamalan says that Tremblay approved of this change, however. Shyamalan called Tremblay to tell him that he wanted to alter the ending for his film adaptation. According to Shyamalan, Tremblay told him that he originally considered ending his book the same way that Shyamalan wraps up his movie, or at least in a similar fashion. Tremblay ultimately went with the more horrific ending, but Shyamalan took comfort in knowing that they both had the same idea. And I was like, great, great. <laughs> so at least you, you thought similarly too. In that sense, you could argue that Shyamalan's Knock at the Cabin is the alternate version of The Cabin at the End of the World that fans never got to read. Outside of making the movie stand on its own, Shyamalan said that he couldn't go down that path. From go, when this book came to me to produce, I felt very strongly that the story can't go the way it was written. Mm -hmm. I, it just can't, it can't go that way. For me, mm -hmm. I have my, my feelings about that. Considering that Shyamalan has three daughters, we can imagine why he wouldn't want to depict Wen's death. Even if Shyamalan had been willing to portray the horrific ending, we're not sure mainstream audiences would have been able to handle it. Can't somebody say, hey, let's be positive. Let's have a good ending to the story. While the book was praised for its endings, Seeing those events on screen is another experience. When Stephen King's The Mist was adapted into a 2007 film, it received a C cinema score. That low grade can likely be attributed to the film's infamous ending, which shares parallels with Wen's fate in Tremblay's book. While some finds The Mist poetically tragic, others hated that it ended on such a bummer. Knock at the Cabin might have been met with the same reception had it kept the book's ending. It's also worth noting that The Cabin at the End of the World hit shelves in 2018. While the book's ending is horrific no matter when you read it, many might have argued that it went too far if it came out in 2023. In the past couple of years, we've endured a global pandemic. The tragedy at Uvalde, Texas, among other shootings, and a haunting rise in anti-Asian hate crimes. Given the current climate, having Wen meet the same fate that she endures in the book probably would have alienated audiences. It still would have opened the door for some challenging conversations, but the less horrific ending isn't unwelcome given where we are as a society. Always together. Always together. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Although Shyamalan's ending isn't as provocative, it doesn't betray the book either. There's still a sacrifice and the characters have to live with the consequences. We wouldn't call it a horrific ending, but we wouldn't call it a happy one either. I like that ending. What do you think? Do you prefer the book's ending, the movie's ending, 
or do you think that both work in their own way? Also, did you stay for the after credits where another mysterious knock can be heard? In any case, we can all agree on one thing. At least the twist wasn't that the cabin was on the moon this whole time. What a twist! Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.